Long did we quest, I, Odin, with my brothers Vili and V. And we looked, and saw that the central realm, Midgard, it was incomplete, for much of it was filled with tree and root, wolf and deer. Yet there was room for more, and as we spoke, we walked on the beaches, we brothers three. For Asgard is where the gods would dwell, so who would order and protect Midgard? Then did V stub his toe on something there, and we saw two driftwood, one of ash and one of elm. And so we went about it, to fill this world with our like, but lesser. Those who would give thanks and sacrifice unto our Godhead. First was Ash, who became Asker. Then was Elm, who became Embla. And I did draw in my might and breathe it into them. I gave them that motive spark, the fire of the soul. And the bark did split and peel back, and there was formed a man of the ash and a woman of the elm. Yet they were still unthinking, unfeeling. So did Vili send forth his power into them, gifting them with sight and touch, reason, and a mind to hold it. And thus did Ve send forth his power into them, granting them blood for movement and speech. So were the first man, Asker, and the first woman, Embla, brought to life. Eyes bright, flesh clean and white, they stood and took in all we had to tell, their duties to Midgard and to us, their gods. We left them with the role as decreed, to increase their number and call this realm their home. Yet this one act would lead to dire repercussions. It would bring on the first war. We brothers three returned to Asgard, where I took up my seat. My brothers Vili and Ve then wandered where I will not tell, only returning the once to rule in my stead. And so time passed, and all seemed right. For I took wives and built my hearth, many sons and daughters I had. And soon the halls of Asgard were filled with my kin. Yet in all this time, I did not sojourn to Midgard. I did not look for betrayal. I did not watch guard against being supplanted. But the others were not so slack. Eventually, one of their kind did even come to our door, calling herself Hyther. Of the others, the Vanir was she. Her skills she had shown to the mortals of Midgard, she claimed, and that she could bring wonder to our realm, as she had done there. So this Aether, which means light, did show us of her splendor, and she was gifted in powers beyond our ken. She was a mighty user of Seder, and could see the warp and weft of fate. She could take her distaff and rant and rave, entering trances where she spoke with all forms of spirit. And she could cast glamours and dreamers, enchantments and spells. She could sense the unknown, heal the ailing, control the weather, and bring good luck. All of reality seemed hers to command with her subtle arts. We, the Azir, we were smitten, and all became beggars at her door, for she dwelt in Asgard at that time. Even I, Odin, darkened her door. 
where others asked for future scryings, baubles, or fates. I, she trained in the very beginnings of the arts of magic. And I felt, as the others did, that she brought beauty and verve to our realm of Asgard. Yet again, I did not watch for what I could never suspect. I was naive then, not as I am now. I came to the realization too late. Truth dawned on me by accident. For my new powers, my blossoming art was secret to the other Azir then. I would not admit that I had been drawn in by Hyther as others had, and to keep this secret, I did go unto Midgard to practice this new art. And there my eyes were opened, for I donned the cloak of the Wanderer and did travel far and wide. Yet, when I went unto the fastnesses of the mortals, there did I see the truth. For in every land, in every village, in every heart of every mortal, the others were worshipped there. So distant had we been, we true gods, we Azir, creators of the realms, that they, the mortals, had broken our compacts, ceased their supplications. They had forgotten the Azir in place of the others, the cursed Vanir. With fire in my heart, I summoned the Bifrost, the Rainbow Bridge, and did return unto my home, unto Asgard. Yet, even worse was the revelation there. For at the door of Hytha did many stand, awaiting her gifts and blessings. And I looked at my realm. For I had been away longer than I had imagined, as is always the way. And I saw what it, what we, the Azir had become. The walls were weak and ramshackle, the halls unkept and covered in filth. And so I walked on, and I saw my people, the gods, laying indolent and introspective, as if all were caught in an invisible snare. No purpose had they but for their wishes to be fulfilled. And there was degeneration, squalor, and violence in all that I saw. For the gods would brawl to be next to be seen by Hyther. Red wrath behind my eyes, the mist descending. So did I stride to her door. So did I fling it open. So did I venture inside and drag her from this one glittering hall. As I processed, I did shout to the Asir, Your Lord, the Allfather, hath returned. Come, follow me, and I shall open your eyes. And I dragged Hyther unto the highest of the high, my own hall, Valhalla, there to put her on trial. And she stood, wide-eyed yet filled with her witching guile. My hall was glittering still, making her seem small, and the looks of angst on the faces of my people it drove me to froth in my rage. I turned on her, this Hyther, and pointed as I circled her, shouting at my own, the Azir, gods of this world. See here, this woman, this other, this Vanir. She keeps you all under her spell, while her kind meet and greet with the mortals. Long have you been under her pall. Long ago have you become her thralls. Mighty Thor, whence have you been to the realms? When have you been to Midgard? Far-sighted Heimdall, why have you given up your vigilance upon our walls? Lawful Tyr, when was the last time you dispensed justice or even heard a case? My queen Frigg and you Sif, when was the last you tended to your duties? I turn and thrust my accusing finger at Hyther again. This witch, 
has made you forget your oaths. This witch has made you weak. This witch has taken from you your very birthright. For the mortals now all give thanks unto the Vanir. While you languish here in Asgard, behold a not to oath honour, nor even our very laws. She hath filled thee with lust and selfishness. She hath taken from you purpose, duty, and meaning. She hath taken your very souls to burn in her fires of witchcraft. The wide eyes of my people now narrow, their hackles rise, their faces from slack moored to tightened jawed. So at last I have them. I spin on the witch and bring it to conclusion. I name her not Heither, but Gulvig. I, I dub her Gold Greed. For that is all she brings into the heart of everyone she claims to serve. For her crimes, I do chastise her. For her crimes, I do punish her. And thus I turned and tied her to a beam of my hall. None would gainsay me, and many now bellowed encouragement. I then brought a table and smote it for kindling. Below her feet I piled it up. Then I took torch fire from my hearth and set it all alight. Gasps there were, but few now, for in moments alone, Gulvig did burn. All watched on in silence, many now content to see the deed done. Yet, when all was subsided, mere ashes remaining, then a light did burst from those embers, and there stood Gulvig clean-limbed, hale and hearty. Again I dove on her and tied her with another chain. Then again I brought fire from my hearth, breaking pews to make kindling anew. And so I burnt Gulvig a second time. Yet again, when fires burnt low, so came the dazzling light. So bright was it that all averted their gaze but I. This time, she did try to flee in the furore, but I dove on the reformed Gulvig yet again. She struggled, yet I am Odin, and I chained her again. And this time, I took logs from mine own hearth, and I stacked them beneath her, making a mystic pyre. Burned, she did, and long we waited at sizzling's end. When all were about to turn from the vision, Again, light burst forth, yet it burned and blackened or so. So mighty was the flash that all stood back, even I. And in that instant, the thrice-reformed Gulvig took to the air. I dove at her a last time, but nothing met my outstretched grasp. For she used her glamours and became a whispering wind and blew from the hall. I landed, watched her leave then rounded on my kin. You Azir, you gods and goddesses of Asgard, lords of the realms nine, will you permit this foul stain on your pride? Will you do nothing to answer this slur, this attack on your honor? Even now, they gather in Vanaheim and guffaw at you. For theirs is the love of the mortals, ours is a realm now in tatters. The victory achieved by our indolence. And these Vanir now claim lordship over all. I drew myself up and opened my hand. Gungir, spear of my wrath, did fly into it. Thus did I stand, chest out, weapon in hand, as I stated to them. Or will you come with me, Odin, all father? and make war upon the others. With rising clamour, the Azir all answered, I. And so, the first war was begun. Some might point to the confrontation with Ymir and say, that was the first war. Yet they are wrong. 
I, it was, who called to my brothers to begin our assault on Emir. I, it was, who dealt the first blow, and the last. Though this deed was a mighty brawl, there were no strategies or tactics, no lull before rising storm. The defeat and destruction of Emir was but a battle. This, this was the first war. We guards and goddesses roused ourselves and set off without delay. Striding across the Bifrost, we marched to the very walls of their home, Vanaheim, one of the realm's nine. Yet, Heiser, who is Gulvig, did beat us there, and the Vanir were ready for our onslaught. My son, the mighty Thor, did join with me in bringing their barricades down, and in slipped Tyr, Heimdall, and Moor. We came on bold and brash, our rage seemingly insurmountable. The red mist raged behind my eyes, and I unleashed it. My berserk broke their barbican. Onward I rushed inside, blood and war my only goal now. The ranks of the Vanir stood there waiting, and I pulled back my arm and let fly with Gungnir. My spear crashed into their lines, slaying many, yet there was witchcraft afoot. For those I had slain did appear elsewhere later in that day. Glamours were they. Onwards we came, my Azir behind my vengeful wake. Yet all was not honourable, nothing was certain. When Thor or Tyr, I or Heimdall, did bring one of the Vanir to Brook, we slew them where they stood. Only their Lord of Light, Frey, or their King, Othar, would stand before any of us. Yet... They would retreat swiftly, only holding us back at points. All others would we slay if we caught them. Yet, this was no mean or miserly feat. For the Vanir were adept at the arts displayed by their envoy, Heither, who is Gulvig, who turned out to actually be Freya. A mysticism and magic strangled breath from our lungs, brought darkness to our eyes, or caused the very air or mountainside to rebel against us. Many were the times the trickery brought us to trackless paths. Many were the times when fire burst amongst our ranks. Many were the times when streams or pools of water pulled us under. The very realm itself was theirs to command. Yet, we had done it great harm. And so, I gave the order to withdraw. I told all that we had come to their home and burnt it. I told all that we had chastened them mightily. I told all, my Azir, that the wrong had been righted. Yet this was not the end of the matter, for I had no conception of why they fought. At first I thought it merely because they had been assailed. Then later, I thought it was because I had burned their envoy, this witch, this Gulvig who is Freya, and kindled a fire in their hearts. Yet this was not the whole of the matter. The war went on, as the others, the Vanir, would not stop. Through the realms we fought, unable to match them and bring fire to Vanaheim a second time. With spells, sorcery, and songs of power, they made all of reality rebel against us. And eventually, through their guile and combat readiness, they stood before the walls of Asgard itself. Frey, Lord of the Morning it was, who took the battle to our lands. With him came Arthur, Njord, Nerthis, and many more of their kind, Vanir all. And they threw down our walls and returned the deeds of the first battle thricefold. Their power came into Asgard and twisted all to their whims. And we Azir fought to hold the Vanir back, but great damage was done in their assault. The Vanir could not stand against us when we cornered them, but this was the trick, for we could not close with them blade on blade. They would avoid my gaze, knowing Gungnir could not miss. And I exacted a toll of death on their lesser sacrificial kin yet no names of worth. And so, 
Therefore he did our bravest, and swept through Asgard unto the very doors of our halls. As the war continued, we beat them back time and again. We raided into Vanaheim, and would beat the grounds and make cavernous chasms, breaking the peace of their realm. Yet the retort was always in equal measure. I was not as wise, not as experienced as I would become. Then I was mostly the god of war. Yet I was also the lord of our halls. I had to fight my urges, my very aspect, and act in my greater role. I had to be the Allfather. By cover of night, Hugin and Moonin, my ravens, I did send to the others. At dawn's first light, they came back unto Asgard and whispered the response into my ear. I roused the Azir, informing them of my arrangement. Of course, many were hot and demanded we fight on, yet all knew it would never end if we did not break the cycle. If I did not break the cycle. High in the heavens upon the Bifrost we met, the Azir arrayed behind me, resplendent in our power. On came the Vanir, shining white, graceful and gracious. Knowing nothing of each other but war, seeing nothing more than enemies, I attempted to throw water over the fires. I decreed that we would not discuss the war until we had decided how we would discuss it. After many hours, it was mutually decided that all proceedings would be adjudicated by Mimir, the Azir God of Wisdom, for he could be dispassionate and fair. The talks were long, hot words were exchanged, but caught before escalation by the deft word of Mimir, and conclusions finally came. Both parties had been wronged. Both had need for redress and for payment under the laws. And, by custom, they would become old and passed down even to the mortals. Hostages were exchanged. In this way, neither side could attack without their kin being executed. But also, while in custody, they could bridge the divide between the peoples. From the Fanir, they would send Frey, Freya, and Njord to live on Asgard. Powerful, skilled, and fell, they would enrich our realm. I, I promised to the Vanir Mimir, the wise, which pleased them mightily, and also Honir, he the Vanir thought so fair that they would make him their chieftain. And for a time, there was peace. The celebrations that raged were bright, Asgard indeed made greater by the presence of the Vanir. And then, on to the work of returning the realms to their grandeur, their beauty. But it was only a breath before another calamity arose, and my ire near broke my control. I near released the red rage. T'was the gift they had given. With great fanfare, the Vanir had sent a token to me. I unwrapped it to see the severed head of Mimir before my eyes. The envoy had explained the cause of said gift. Honir and Mimir had seen such excellent gods, the equal to those sent by the Vanir to live with us. At first, Honir had seemed of high worth, yet when Mimir was not present, he would falter, and Honir would give no matter a decisive answer. Let others decide, he would state. The Vanir smelt out the ruse. So 
they sent back my only worthy gift in exchange, the head of Mimir. My brows furrowed, my hackles rose. Those as they around me were incensed. Yet, there was no fear in the eyes of the ambassador of the others, for he saw the truth of the matter in mine own. I, Mimir had been a loss to Asgard. Honir, he was not. Fair of face, clean of limb, tall and brave. Yet, I had given him willingly, for he was as witless as a rock. Strange that they had not slain Hornir, a mercy I discerned, for they now knew as well as I that he had no capacity for guile. He was blameless. I let the ambassador go, as one of honor must, I restrained my people. I told them I would ponder on the matter. And so, I did. I had been practicing the craft shown me by Gulvig, who is Freya, and I took the head of Mimir, and I prepared it in seclusion. I whispered truths in his ears. I sang songs of power over him. I embalmed his head in herbs rare and potent, cut at the right time, prepared with ken of their attributes. And after nine days of this, Mimir and I spoke. He was distant and direct, an echo, not a mind. I asked him how I should respond to his own slaying, and he advised me, well... Nothing had changed in the power of the Azir and the Vanir. If started again, the war would be eternal. The others had shown their worth, nothing more. For I, Odin, had indeed slighted them with the gift of Honir as a worthy. So they had proven themselves my equal again. It would be best to treat them truly, as if they were so. Yet this... The exchange of captives was not the entirety of the matter, for the Vanir were still not permitted to be worshipped by the mortals by my own decree, and this was their true purpose in the sending of their gift. The true reason for the war had not been the burning of Gulvig, just its spark, nor the Azir breaking their walls and desecrating Vanaheim, not really. It was the prayers and respect of the mortals at its heart. So Mimir advised, and so I responded to this silent demand with another call for direct parley. We met again, yet this time I acted in good faith. This was no time for pragmatism, for the realms themselves hung by a thread. I looked Arthur, the lord of the Vanir, in my eye, and I nodded my head to him as an equal. I stated that I understood his message, and from there things were fast made hail again. There was no need for Mimir's wisdom here, as I had it resounding in my ears, and we made common cause for I confirmed that they would be loved by the humans as equals to the Azir. As there was Oscar and Embla, so would they be able to pray to Azir or Vanir in equal right. To commemorate our new oaths, every god and goddess of Azir and Vanir we spat into a cauldron, and together we used our powers, gave life and breath, senses and movement, to Kvasir, a mortal. And Kvasir would be the wisest of all beings ever birthed or forged, and he would represent our unity, our peace, our wisdom. With this new accord in place, the Vanir returned to Vanaheim, and we Azir returned to Asgard. Yet, in good cheer, Frey, Freya, and Njord 
returned with us to the golden halls, and there it was that Freya and I spake again. As with the faith of the mortals, we would share. I would gain the first pick of all warriors slain on the field of battle. She would get her half even of those remaining. And so I set about improving Valhalla to make it a hall worthy of the glorious dead. When this permanent peace had held, finally been set in stone, then did I look within. I had learned much in this war with the others, with the Vanir. I learned more in making the peace. I had learned from Freya the arts of magic, glamour and sadir. I had begun to explore it further than even she could teach. Yet, the power of my Azir had been countered by its use, and I needed Mimir to hold my own in all of this. It was not good enough. I, Odin, all father, I was not good enough. And so I came to a mighty decision. And so began my quest, my goal, my tireless search. I would know all. I would change my own aspect. I would become the lord that was required to rule the realms. I, Odin, would become the wisest and greatest of all.